The Paris World Athletics Championships 2003. In the days before Usain Bolt, track and field was crying out for a new kind of hero. And we were given a sprinter with a bullet start, a sense of humour, and an absolute refusal to accept basic instruction from an official. This is the story of John Drummond. The story climaxes on August the 20th, 2003, at the quarter-final stage of the men's 100 metres. John Drummond, one of the US team's big hopes, had full started, but spent almost an hour arguing with officials and refusing to leave the track. Even as an impressionable 10-year-old boy watching at the time, I knew something about this wasn't quite right. This kind of thing did not normally happen in athletics. Described as a notable extrovert and a singer in a gospel music group, John Drummond was once hailed as the clown prince of athletics. Born in Philadelphia in 1968, Drummond was a promising junior and came to prominence in the early 1990s, coming of age alongside a top generation of sprinters, which included Ato Bolden, Frankie Fredericks, Bruni Serene, Donovan Bailey, and slightly later, Morris Green. Drummond became known for a lightning start, and he was able to get out of the blocks even faster than Green, who for many years was the best men's 60 meter runner the world had ever seen. This made Drummond handy for the US team in the 4x100 meter relay, where he would often run the first leg for the US. That team won Olympic silver in 1996, and gold in 2000, as well as gold in the 1993 and 1999 World Championships. However, Drummond was never a global medalist at an individual level, but he did have a respectable 100 meter personal best of 9.92 seconds in the 100 meters, and 20.03 seconds in the 200 meters. A good career by anyone's standards in the 1990s and early 2000s then. But I suppose you are all here to discuss the incident. Drummond was not exactly a late bloomer, but in the 2003 World Championships he was approaching 35 years old. But he was still one of the best in the world, having run a 10.07 second season's best that year. 2003 was a strange one for the men's 100 metres, as there were lots of big names, but nobody was exactly setting the world alight with their form. Maurice Green was defending champion, but down on form, Ato Bolden was not the athlete he used to be, Asafa Powell was still young, Tim Montgomery was inconsistent and later found to be doping, as was Dwayne Chambers. There might be a gold medal here for the taking in a relatively slow time in a tight race. One more thing. That year, the IAAF, the governing body for athletics, introduced a new rule where after one false start, the whole field was then on caution, and then with one more false start, any athlete would be disqualified. In Paris, Drummond won his heat, and was then actually given, I think, quite a tough quarter-final. Look at those names. Jamaica's Dwight Thomas false started, and the runners were then called back, which meant that, under this then new rule, whoever false started next would then be disqualified. On the second start, there was another recall gun, this time much closer, and after careful inspection, the officials decided Asafa Powell, then aged 20, had false started, as had, you guessed it, John Drummond. Holy scandal, I can tell John Drummond, who will verify at the cellule. I didn't move! I did not move! Aïe, 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 aïe. I did not move, je n'ai pas bougé. Il dit que ce n'est pas possible. Il dit que c'est pas possible qu'il n'a pas bougé. Il y a le couloir 5 de, de Powell. Et aussi viré. Deux exclus dans, le, dans la même course. C'est ouais, du jamais que... vu là. Ouais, effectivement. To quote from The Guardian in August 2003. Most athletes see the rule which was introduced in an attempt to please television producers by reducing delays as essentially unfair. Drummond, Powell, and seemingly all the spectators inside the Stade de France needed no convincing. Let me just clarify, this is not the rule that is now in force today. Today, when there is one false start, that runner is disqualified. Back then, the rule was not as harsh as it is now. It meant that there could be someone false starting who would get away with it, and then everyone was under caution. Now it's just one strike and you're out. Now if someone makes a false start, they go straight away, like Usain Bolt did in 2011. But in 2003, this rule was revolutionary. 
Drummond could not believe he had committed such an offence as to jump the gun, even when the officials produced a printout reading to show that he had done just that. I did not move, he shouted again and again and again. He then went and lay down on the track, declaring he was not moving, as an official then made the strange decision to stand over Drummond, holding up the red card, just in case, you know, there was any confusion as to what the US sprinter was being asked to do. This went on for some time. The crowd hissed and commentators on television proclaimed outrage, but this, come on, like, we, we all loved it. How often does this happen in athletics? Powell and Drummond then left the track, one more gracefully than the other, but then weirdly they did an about turn and came back like nothing had happened, and then expected to be included in a restart. Of course this tactic did not work and neither man was allowed to run. They did eventually leave the track and Drummond was later seen being consoled by a coach in the training area. From the naked eye it did not look like either man had made a false start, but starting blocks are very sensitive and they can be set off by the slightest twitch. The crowd continued to boo, Bolden got annoyed at the crowd, the race finally got underway, Bolden won, Bolden refused to do any interviews. Then the final came around and it was a bit of an anticlimax to be honest. I hope for his sake that John Drummond wasn't watching. Because, as I said, it was a tight race, and it was won by an outsider, literally an outsider. Kim Collins in lane one surprised everyone by winning in a time of 10.07 seconds, the time being exactly the same as what Drummond had run earlier that year. So Drummond only had himself to blame then. Well, like I said, at the time, people were very angry about this and sided with Drummond and said that it was actually a stupid rule. One of those being Ato Bolden, who said, We told the IAAF that it was a bad rule. We said this rule will never work. Nobody wants it. The machines are not perfect. There are 50,000 pairs of eyes out there who could all see it was a bad call. Unfortunately for Bolden and Drummond, as I earlier alluded to, this was an incident that actually led to the false start rule being made stricter. The IAAF said at the time, the advisory board has studied the behaviour of John Drummond, who refused to leave the track following his disqualification after a false start, and USA track and field team admin officer Michael Kane, not that one, who ran onto the track to advise Drummond not to accept his disqualification, and we have concluded in both cases the behaviour was improper, unsporting, and has brought the sport of athletics into disrepute. Into disrepute. No further action was taken, however, and Drummond was free to compete, but never again reached that same level, failing to make the US team for the 2004 Olympics and the 2005 World Championships before he retired. As a coach, Drummond guided the US women's team to 4x100 meter relay gold in London in 2012. However, he was later banned after his athlete Tyson Gay was found to have used in a performance enhancing substance. As for his legacy, Drummond knows it, it is not his achievements in sprinting or coaching that he will be remembered for though. He said in 2012, I had 13 years where I had made championship teams, won medals, and all of a sudden you get this generation who just comes out onto the scene and all they know is, man, you're the guy who lay on the track. You're a spoiled brat to some, you're a hero to others. After just a few years, I had to recognise the fact that that's the way life is. According to reports, Drummond is now leading a church. So perhaps things have gone full circle and he's back to his gospel roots. In the 20 years that have passed since Drummond, lay on the track, nothing like that has happened again in athletics, and I doubt anything like that will ever happen again in athletics. To be fair though, how often do we talk about sprinters of a similar ilk? How often do we talk about Andre Kaysen, Bernard Williams, Leonard Scott, and a whole load of other decent but not game-changing US sprinters? Not all that often. John Drummond though, we talk about all the time. And to this day, John Drummond serves a lesson. And the moral of this story, I think, is that if you want to be remembered in athletics, all you have to do is lay on a track and refuse to acknowledge a simple instruction over and over again.